Online Amazon has finished buying Whole Foods and is ready to cut prices left and right. The conventional wisdom is that the packaged food companies that serve the supermarket industry could be in a lot of trouble. This was a tough business even before Amazon Whole Foods tie-up, as vicious competition has made grocery stores a lot less generous to their suppliers. So is there any way for a food company to triumph here? Take Hain Celestial, the organic and natural uh, food kingpin. That's fine. Celestial Seasons, Earth Best, Terra, Garden of Eden. You've eaten all this stuff. Health Valley, Red Hot, Greek Gods, Yogurt, a host of other brands. Hain is very much tied into the healthy eating trend. And natural organics, it's really, they're really synonymous. The company's aggressively trying to cut costs, too. But its stock hasn't done much, even as last year's SEC issues apparently are behind them. That said, Haynes just reported yesterday, and the company delivered a nice top and bottom line beat, really good EBITDA. Yet it didn't seem to matter to the stock, except for initially, investors seemed so plagued and worried about the possible competition to care. Even when management offered some very bullish commentary on the, on the potential benefits of the Amazon Whole Foods deal. Plus, we know an activist firm got involved here two months ago, Engage Capital. I don't know much about them. We'll have to find out. Some people theorize that they want the company put up for sale. Are people right to be concerned, or is this stock just not getting the credit it deserves? Let's take a closer look with Erwin Simon. He's the founder. He's the chairman, president, and CEO of Haines Celestial to find out more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Mr. Simon, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Erwin. Yeah, I'm How so- are you? Have a seat. Hey, now I know I made it being back. Ah, uh, Well, you know what? You deserved to be back, and Thank I think you that you're confident conference call was very interesting because you made a point that I think people don't understand. If you are selling a lot, whether it be to Amazon, Whole Foods, whatever, to anybody, you're going to be able, given the fact you cut your costs, to make a lot of money. And so it really can be a tailwind. It is not just a, a, a fiction that you describe it a tailwind. So, so number one, Jim, I've been doing this for 24 years, and part of Hain has been built on acquisitions. And today we own some of the greatest brands, whether it's Terra Chips, whether it's Greek Gods, Earth's Best, where we feed infants and toddlers their first foods. And coming back today, consumers want healthy food. And we've talked about this many, many times. And millennials, which is the biggest consumer population out there today, want branded organic foods, want to know what's in their products. Right. You know, I mentioned something on the conference call yesterday where over 30% of natural organic foods are bought online, okay? Right. And think about it. Where's the biggest growth coming from is online. Now, Amazon, 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 and Amazon and Whole Foods together are a big part of our sales and will continue to be a big part of our growth. But consumers going into brick and mortar today want healthier food. $800 billion of consumer packaged goods is sold in the U.S. And the whole consumer packaged goods industry is going through a change right, right. now. So consumers are going to buy Earth's Best versus Gerber, mm. going to buy Marinantha versus a Skippy. And that's where our opportunity is. All right. Now, let's take a look at uh, here's I've got some typical research. B, uh, BMO, BMO. Skepticism remains despite a solid turnaround plan. And then uh, I talked about fabulously, but particularly international. Then it says uh, they said that they have uh, viewing the guidance with a dash of skepticism and pointing out that while you think that there's a great de- greater degree of insulation, in the end, Amazon has to crater everybody in order to be able to take share. So, Jim, listen, I've overcome a lot in 24 years. I think that's okay? true. And listen, I'm a fighter out there. Um, number one, 2017 was one of my toughest years ever in our career. And we overcome it. Um, you know, we went through a, a financial review. We came out really on the good end, as you say. With that, some challenges, whether it was in the protein business and just challenges. But I got to tell you, at the end of the day, having strong brands, mm-hmm. strong people, and being in a good category will get us to the next level. You know, Hain has made a lot of money over its years mm-hmm. and given back to shareholders. We've created over $4 billion of market cap, 7,800 employees around the world. And I believe Hain has helped change the way consumers eat in America by getting more and more distributions on their products. Well, what okay? I thought was most interesting, though, was that I felt that I'd always felt, boy, it took on a lot. But there was a lot of cost to cut. I mean, and you had bringing people who really did say, hey, listen, we got to divest this. We got to cut costs there. I didn't know there was that much room to do it. So think about it. Listen, our EBITDA is 400, 350, 400 million dollars. So we're going to take Operating 300. Cash flow was yeah, terrific. Yeah, I'm going to take 350 million dollars of cost today. You know, Hain throws off a lot of cash. And right. I'm somebody who is focused on growth, focused on my balance sheet, because I live by when you go to an ATM machine, you don't get an adjusted balance, you get cash out. So I'm a big guy on cash because cash pays the bills. And something that Hain has not done is invested into the consumer the way we're going to do it this year. We're going to spend $50 million investing in the consumer to bring that millennial in 
to connect to our Maranatha brand, to our Earth's Best brand, to our Sensible Portion brand. And that's a big, 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 you know, expenditure we're going to make on the consumer. Okay, now, you know, because this uh, show's got some rules, uh, you know, we see accounting issues, we get nervous. Uh, what did you learn now that, that you went through that? And you actually had an unbelievably good audit committee to begin with. So it wasn't like you had a, a group staffed with just buds. There were not buds on that board. But what did you learn? Listen, the silver lining is this here. You know, I went through a year of hell. Yeah, on, was, the, on the other hand, listen, you have to pull all your employees together. You have to pull your shareholders together, the vendors, the rumor mill out there, et cetera. Right. At the end of the day, we come out a much stronger company. And as you go in as deep as we did, you look at the company and say, hey, we're not so bad at all. And with that, we came out uh, June 22nd. There was no material change. Right. They're all That's cash, really every sales. People. And I got to tell you no something. no material change is really and, important. And there was no restatement, et cetera. Right. So the big thing is what you learn is this here. It's all about your brands and your people. Right. And could we have had stronger people? Could we have had, so, you know, and, and Hain has been built on acquisitions. And the big thing is the process you put in place. So for me, there was a lot that I learned through this here. And I will tell you, Hain has come out a much, much stronger well, company. And is that something when you talk with these people from Engage Capital, they want to put seven people on? I mean, where is this? Is this a, a convi convivial or is it adversarial? I mean, because you are you are a person who is open-minded to different people's views. So number one is, is this here. We were going to make changes on our board. And I believe boards should be independent directors, not friends of Irwin, et cetera, right. okay? You know, back in 2012, I had Carl Icahn as right. an activist investor come in. Carl made himself $450 million and put two board members on the board, and the company continuously grew, and we have an extra relationship, and I have an extra relationship with Carl today. Listen, I want the best for shareholders, okay? And if Engage has great independent board members, I'm open to it. The last thing I'm open to is a distraction from the company, get into some type of proxy fight. It's right. moving forward and in investing our brands and returning to our shareholders. Well, I am thrilled that you got through this issue. I know that I want people to understand what their view is on the tailwind in Whole Foods because there's a lot of panic involved. Maybe not all panic is good because no one's ever made a dime doing that. Take a look at the brands. Listen to what Erwin said. Erwin Simon, founder, president, chairman, and CEO, Payne Celestial. It's good to have you back, Erwin. Good to be back, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.